They know they are dead wrong for that. Someone did mention um medications coming in at it. Even with tomatoes, this is not usual. I mean, I know we be low over here in my parts of New Jersey, but hey fam, welcome back, welcome back to another video. Today is Saturday, guys. So happy Saturday, first and foremost. Um, welcome all. Hopefully, you all are doing well. It's a rainy day here in New Jersey. I heard reports of North Carolina getting crazy rain as well so let us know what your weather is like anyhow so this is saturday today is saturday we're checking in for our news comments and reports over here in new jersey so this is shauna and i'm officially checking in over here at moments with us you guys check in let us know where you are watching from and how you are doing let's go ahead and see what's going on with today's reports all right fam so let's go ahead and get to some of these reports and see what's being reported all right so we go from salmonella to E. coli. So over here in New Jersey, E. coli did hit us in a national outbreak tied to a cheese recall, y'all. So a national E. coli outbreak has hit New Jersey with one confirmed case in the state, according to the CDCNP. So the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. So there have been 11 confirmed E. coli cases so far across five states. Uh, five states. Linked to raw firms, raw cheddar cheese, y'all. So the cheese is sold at retailers nationwide and has been recalled. So California has four confirmed infections. Colorado has three confirmed um, infections. Utah has two and Texas and New Jersey each have one. So the Food and Drug Administration is warning consumers to not eat, sell, or serve raw farm brand raw cheddar cheese products. According to the CDC, five patients have been hospitalized and two develop hemolytic uremic syndrome, a serious condition that can lead to kidney failure. No deaths has been reported, the agency says. Symptoms of E. coli can begin anywhere from a few days after consuming contaminated food or up to nine days later. Wow. Symptoms include severe stomach cramps, diarrhea, fever, nausea, or, and or vomiting. So let's go ahead and quickly find a picture of this cheese so you guys can stay prepared and stay aware. All right, guys. So here are some of the pictures of the cheese that have been recalled. So you guys check that out. If you have it, toss it out. While some people are like, why would you want raw cheese? And other people are totally for it. Um, what's your thoughts on it? But if you do have it, toss it out or go ahead, give that number a call and get your refund. So more reports on outages with mobile banking. Yes, what they're trying to lead to, everything done digitally or mobile. So more um, outages reported with that. And I believe that's PNC. Let's go ahead and pull that up now. So if you do have PNC, so PNC bank customers have been reporting mobile banking outages since Friday. So since yesterday. So if you are having trouble still, they are working on the issue, just to let you guys know. So an outage monitoring site, Downtector, received over 1,100 problem reports on PNC by roughly 10.15 a.m., with most related to mobile banking and login. So some reports indicated problems with online login as well. But PNC said the access problem related to mobile banking, just only mobile banking. So they went ahead and said, good morning. Some customers are experiencing access issues while mobile banking at this time. Something that we're supposed to be relying on nowadays, right? Mm -hmm. So our technical teams are engaged in working to restore access as, a soon, as soon as possible. Online banking is currently available. Thanks for your patience, they went ahead and said. And they posted that on X, which is formerly known as Twitter. So as of 12 p.m. yesterday, they still was getting reports of the, you know, mobile app being down. It says shortly, shortly before noon, actually. So they were still receiving issues with their online mobile banking. So if you have PNC, if you're still having issues, let us know. Well, y'all, again, so 93,000 pounds of raw meat, some ships to Ohio recall for a possible contamination. Man, this is not getting any better. So more than 93 
thousand pounds of raw meat products, some of which were shipped to restaurants in Ohio, have been recalled for possible contamination. So on Thursday, MF Meats, based in Falconer, New York, recalled the products, including various meat cuts and ground meats of beef, pork, sausage, and veal, because they may have been contaminated with non-food grade mineral seal oil, which the F. SIS says isn't approved for meat processing. So health officials did go ahead and say the agency received four complaints from the restaurant saying their meat had a chemical taste to it. Mm. So there have been no reported illnesses related to this recall. So MF Meats produced the meats between November 26, 2023 and February 16, 2024. They have Julian dates of 330 through 365, November 26 through December 31st, and 1 through 47, January 1st through February 16th. And here's what the label looks like. Well, here's just a quick picture of the label of what the packages of meat do look like. Um, sort of recall products have been shipped to restaurants in Ohio, New York, and Pennsylvania. So if you've recently ate out in one of those restaurants and your meat had a chemical taste, this could have been why so there are still some concerns that restaurants could still have the recall meats in their refrigerators or freezers restaurants are urged to either go ahead and throw the products away or return them anyone with questions or concerns regarding the recall can contact mf meats president dog neckers at 716-483-4050 or info at mfmeats.com so it doesn't state exactly which restaurants but if you recently ate out in ohio um pennsylvania or new york i believe those are three states don't get me the line um definitely and your meat had a chemical taste it could have been this well this could have been a reason so definitely if you want to go ahead and contact them with any information the information is here Bam, before we continue, I wanted to share this picture that I have here of a potato. Yes, some people might be like, oh, no, that potato bad. Throw it out. No, it is not bad. Cut this thing up in sections, throw it in some dirt, and get to growing. But you do need, like, the buckets or you can get the um, mesh-like growing um, bags out of Dollar Tree. They're like, I think, what are they, like, five-gallon type bags? This is really big green that it bags. Um, from Dollar Tree, or you can use buckets from Dollar Tree. Cut them up, throw them in it with some dirt, and you could go ahead and grow yourself some potatoes. It's been a while since I've had a potato in my house that sprouted because it's been a while. Every bag of potatoes that I bought, even the single potatoes, I'll leave it on the counter for like a month, even put it in the fridge. Guess what? It would not sprout. So what's going on, right? We've been hearing about this, about the bread not molding and so much other stuff. But the potatoes, they have not been sprouting. So finally, here we are. And we're going to go ahead and give it another try. So yes, I was definitely happy to share that. To all my Walmart shoppers like me, guess what? All right, so a lot of the family over here, including myself, do shop at Walmart. So Walmart do have a $45 million settlement. Um, So if you bought meat or bag citrus, you may be eligible for up to $500, but it's not a whole, oh, you're going to get $500 if you bought meat or any type of oranges or, you know, something like that from Walmart. It don't work like that. So what's happening is Walmart did agree to pay out $445 million in their settlement because what was happening, so what was happening was Walmart's scale was technically pricing more than what the item actually weighed. So Walmart's $45 million settlement includes, okay, so Walmart's $45 million settlement includes anyone Yes, anyone who actually went and bought weighted groceries at Walmart. Um, so according to the settlement, it covers anyone who bought weighted goods or bag citrus in person at a Walmart store between October 19, 2018, y'all, all the way until January 19, 2024. Um, anything that has weighted goods. 
is defined as wild beef, chicken, pork, turkey, and other meats, as well as seafood that is sold by the pound. So they do have a complete list. This particular article, I would leave in a pinned comment down below so you can get your money because that's all the way from 2018 to 2024. Y'all know my how much stuff I bought from Walmart. That's possibly weighted. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get some of that settlement money. I don't care if it's a few dollars. I'm going to get some of that settlement money. So that article will tell you exactly how to go ahead and put your name on that settlement list. So the suit claims Walmart point of sale machines artificially raised the weight of goods when marked as a discounted price. Of course, causing the total price to be more than advertised. It also claims the bag produce weights exceeded the actual weight of the product, resulting in customers paying more. Exactly. Also, goods that were nearing expiration and marked with a yellow sticker were sold at a higher price than the pre-unit price and indicated. Walmart denies any wrongdoing and the settlement is awaiting court approval. They better approve it because I want my money. So if the settlement is approved, shoppers without a receipt or proof of purchase who attest their purchase, one through 50 products will receive $10. So if you purchase 50 products, you want to get 10 Ten dollars, okay. So claimants who bought fifty-one through seventy-five products will receive fifteen dollars, okay. Um, so those who I'm getting very discouraged reading this. So those who purchase seventy-six items, seventy-six through a hundred products will receive twenty dollars, okay. And claimants who purchase one thousand ten more products will receive. You got to purchase over. Am I reading that right? 1,010 or more products will receive $25. I know I'm not driven. Okay, so is it worth it? Let's see. You got to click on this topclassactions.com. Um, follow article, yada, yada, weighted goods. Okay, go, go, go down, 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 down. Just want to show you guys this. Click here to file a claim. So it does have the claim form here. And you got to put your information and some of this stuff, you just be skeptical with it, though. Um, if this is correct, you go ahead and you put in your information. If you receive the personalized notice via email with the notice ID and confirmation code, please enter it down below. If any of you actually ever submitted a claim this way, let me know in the comments down below. Because I feel as if with Walmart, at least. I know for the recent years, they can track most of the orders online, especially if you have a Walmart account and you have used your card. Um, you should automatically receive a notice in the mail. Simple as that because everything is online. They know what you bought and all of that stuff is being tracked. But for the prior years, I'm not too sure how I'm not too sure how any of that is being tracked. Um yeah, but for the recent years, all of that stuff is online. If you bought it, you'll see it online. And so would the company already be notified and know who bought what. But as far as that whole reported claim through that website there, um, I never reported a claim like that. So definitely just be careful with sending your information out. And if it's worth it, it's worth it. And if it's not, then it's not. So go ahead and proceed, but with caution. So let's discuss this. I know some of y'all order delivery as much as I do. And ex even though I go to Walmart, y'all, sometimes I don't feel like shopping fully. Sometimes I go to Walmart really just to record. Sometimes I don't pick up everything. Um, and sometimes I just plain old simple forget stuff. So when I do order on Walmart sometimes, I'm so sick and tired of getting messages. Of bing, bing, item unavailable. And then I see this article. I'll be calling everyone out daily. It says Walmart worker catches online order pickers lying about unavailable items. Yes. And let me tell you guys how I know this for a fact. Not only have I purposely went to Walmart and I've seen plenty of something on a shelf. And as I'm going through Walmart, I actually added the item to my cart because I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to put a delivery in. Let's just see. So I put the delivery in only for me to get the notice item is unavailable or, oh, we had to substitute this item. Plenty of whatever it is that I was asking for on the shelves. 
And not only that, um, sometimes let's say I order something from like the hygiene, a certain body wash. And I'll be having like my food items. Let's just say eggs, right? It'd be like, oh, item unavailable. I have more stuff that needs to be shopped for over in, um, you know, the, the health department or beauty, cosmetics, whatever. I have plenty of other stuff that I need on the other side of the store. How is it that, you know, my hygiene item, my body wash is unavailable and then my eggs are unavailable? Are you really going from this side of the store to that side of the store? Or are you just clicking unavailable because you want to hurry up with this list? Come on. But I'm in the store all the time, so I can obviously get what I need or I do have some items at home that I already need. But still, them pickers don't be picking all the time. Sometimes I get some good ones and I get everything on my list because they actually took the time out to look for items. But some of them, oh, yeah, they go through it, go through it and go through it because they're trying to get to the next order. Because I believe if they complete um, certain orders by a certain time. Maybe they get like some, like a higher money or a point system. I really don't know. Maybe that's what it is. But the way that they be going through my orders sometimes, mm. this is exactly who I want doing my Instacart orders, this person saying. So if you've ordered a Walmart pickup order through the retailer's mobile application or website, then your items were selected and fulfilled by a Walmart picker. Pickers are equipped with mobile devices manufactured by Zebra, which display all of the store logs inventory. But <clears throat> oftentimes, there are discrepancies in the inventory amounts listed on the back end versus what's actually in store. This could be due to theft, returns that were never processed, or goods being damaged that never and never deducted from the aggregate total in the inventory list. So when a picker is looking for items to fulfill a shopper's request but can't locate them, they mark those products as not found unavailable in a substitute so that's when someone like a tiktoker whoever this person is tio chaco comes in and check to see if those items are really unavailable yes so as he demonstrates they are there basically point blank and period basically what i said and what i did he went ahead and checked and boom it was there and that's what a lot of them do to go ahead and rush that shopping trip. And I feel like when I pay to have like a rush delivery, let's say I really need something and I pay that $10 to get it in an hour or that $5 to get it within three hours. Listen, I at least want the stuff if it is actually there. So if you're wondering why your order have been looking like this out of stock, out of stock, out of stock and out of stock and 10 items in your cart are currently unavailable. That's probably why. So if you do have the means of actually going to the store, definitely, if you really need those items, definitely go to the store and, you know, get those items. See if they're actually in stock. But for people who means of transportation is limited, man, it is quite ridiculous. I wish we had more honest people in the world, right? But we don't. And that is the reality of it all. We only have a few more minutes left for some comments, so we're only going to jump right into a few more comments, and then sometime in the middle of the week, we'll pick this video up again with the rest of mainly just comments. So let's go ahead and see what some of you are talking about. Someone did say that they heard there could be an issue with coffee and tea coming soon. They said it's just a rumor, and it's third-hand knowledge at best, but doesn't hurt to have some extra so they hear when that coffee will be falling short again that means prices would be rising yet again on coffee but they're saying that it's tea as well so to confirm that someone did also share that their local coffee shop did say that they're going to be raising their prices significantly and soon due to the coffee shortages um yeah that could be an issue with business businesses running out of items to serve and it's becoming more costly for them to go ahead and sit down and have a cup of coffee. It's going to soon cost more than just Starbucks. If you have a local coffee shop, yeah, their price is definitely going to be going up as well. Someone else came through and says, supply chain disruptions. I have a friend who drives OTR Big Rig. He said there has not been much of any loads to pick up and the ones that are there aren't paying much. So that's re ridiculous and that's a major concern 
So Sandy T Mobile did come through and check in from Oregon and stated that in Oregon, we're at $18 for the box of eggs. Coffee cream is now $8 for the medium. Hamburger at $9 a pound. Gas at $5 and going up. We pay sales tax. It is just already in the price uh -oh. And that goes up 17% for New Year. Wow, be blessed for stocking up. Ain't that crazy with those prices? I can imagine because you do constantly come through and check in and share those prices with us. And every time you come and share price, yes, your prices are up constantly. So if you're stocking up, keep stocking up because the route that you guys are going over there in Oregon, not only are, are a lot of stores and everything closing down, but them prices are ridiculous too. So thank you for coming through and sharing the importance of staying prepared, stocking up and all. You continue to be blessed as well. Thank you for coming through. Christine came through and checked in from Wisconsin. Thank you so much for checking in. Um, so try to get tortillas on Saturday, which was sold out. No corn or flour at Walmart at all. I just couldn't believe it. Yeah, that, that's quite ridiculous to those. Some major shortages there. No corn or flour. There was some time, probably about a month or two, maybe a month and a half ago. We can't, we have no flour, no sugar at all at our Walmart, neither. But since then, we do have it on occasions, which is great. So it's a great time to stock up because at any point in time when you do see them items, Ain't no telling if it's going to disappear for a long period of time before returning or if that price do jump up again. All right, so from Ms. Barbara, check it in from Western North Carolina. Three Dollar Trees within 15 miles of my house. One is small, but always clean, organized, and stock. One is a hot mess, but nice. Um, one is a hot mess, but nice but overworked employees. The first two have half price Christmas stuff, but the Third Dollar Tree is a huge disaster. Surely, employees, if you can't find one, I left today with a few things in the checkout area but never saw a single employee. They do not discount after Christmas. They still have the $5 Halloween size. Um, wooden Christmas and Thanksgiving tray still $5. Wait. They finally packed up and sent away last year's Easter stuff only when they started putting out back to school. The store periodically just closes in the middle of the day. Sometimes they just leave a note on the door saying, close due to no staff. Sometimes, no, no. Of course, this is the store that's closest to me. Barbara, <laughs> ain't that a hot mess. But I am glad to know that at least some of your Dollar Tree did have the items discounted. But I did actually um, see across social media that there was a time where there was notes put on them doors like at Family Dollar, Dollar Tree, Dollar General. Oh, well, we're closed due to no staff. Man, it is crazy. But a lot of you have different views on why Dollar Tree is so messy why is this stuff always in the aisles and the whole putting the notes on the door? A lot of you have different views and opinions on that. We're going to share that in the next, um, I guess, a comments video. We're going to actually go over that because it's really interesting. And some of you are actual employees of Dollar Trees. So we're really going to dive into this and kind of like dissect these comments because... Yeah, Dollar Tree, they be doing their employees dirty. But we're going to leave this video right here where it's at. Because firstly, this video have gone over 20 minutes. But I was enjoying it so much that I kept going. Um, So we're going to stop it right here. And if you're still here and you are new, look down. Check to see if you press the subscribe button. And if you haven't, go ahead and press that subscribe button. And become part of the family over here at Moments with us. You guys, I'm officially up out of here. It's a rainy day over here in New Jersey. Oh, my God. I can't stand the rain. I guess my window. No, I can't stand the rain. Um, But it is what it is. But with us facing severe drought almost everywhere, yeah, we have been getting some rain. And we plan to get more. And it is what it is. So, this is Shauna. And I'm officially checking out from Moments with us. Make sure you all stay prepped, stay blessed, stay safe. Most of all, remain beautiful queens and kings. Until next time, y'all, I'm officially up out of here. Peace. Stay blessed.